come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, boils and ghouls, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. It's a weekly movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday night. You can't get out of the way. We're steamrolling the entire planet one internet radio at a time that doesn't make any sense <laughs> no. I, don't know. I was just wanting to see where you were going with that yeah i just want to see where you were going uh yeah and can never stick the landing I'm just no. gonna give well, up sometimes on you do no, not not tonight, tonight. no yeah because <laughs> wow. uh, no uh, he's steamrolling right over <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gotta do you just gotta keep going you don't look back you just keep going forward no, you don't identify what we're do. the uh, the failure you just keep going yeah. that's yeah. right it's fine um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we do here. Well, I told you already. We watch movies, right? And then we sit around and we talk about them uh, for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. Uh, Hopefully it's a pleasure. are these internet <laughs> radio superstars who are going to be talking to you tonight? John. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Holly, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Hell Night mm, from Night. the year 1981 and directed by Tom DeSimone, who we would know from many sexploitation movies. Ooh. Many. I know. All I've the seen, big ones. I feel like all the big ones. All the big ones. We were just the side of sexploitation in this movie. But yeah. He, you're looking he, at he a, held back, apparently. Oh, there's, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's reasons for that. Okay. And not by, by his choice, obviously. Sure. He, he did sure, the, sure, sure. Concrete Jungle and Prison Girls, uh, Reform School Girls, Reform School. Oh my yeah. god, I've seen that and one. Chatterbox. Okay, Are I've seen that. Are you familiar with oh, Chatterbox? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard of Chatterbox. That used it's to be when I worked. Famous. I worked at a video store, and I think yeah. that was on my list. Or on my, you know, when you, all the employees would have your shelf. Sure. I had that one. That on was me. your recommendation. Shut that up. was your recommendation. That was on your shelf. You it's filthy, hilarious. Filthy Put man. society dirty, on dirty that man. shelf too while you're no, at it. No, no. You I mean, know what Chatterbox is? Chatter- no, I've never seen it. Chatterbox is about a woman with a talking vagina. <laughs> Better than talking. <laughs> it's, it's, I get it now. It, yeah. I get it. I yeah. understand it the sings. title. It, it sings, sings better than she does, and that she goes yeah. on like a- Do you know uh, the original title of that was Lips? <laughs> nice. I'm nice. sorry. Why the fuck have we not watched this movie? <laughs> Well, now you know. Jesus. The All right, next week, Chatterbox. Do that in a double feature with teeth. Yeah. Oh, right? God. Holy From, shit. Uh, Where's the Stallone. drive-in that's programming this shit? I just saw the girl who was in teeth is going to be in something. Good I think, for her. Oh, she's, uh, she's in It Chapter 2. Isn't she Audra? Is she really? Is she Audra? I think she's Audra. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. It's good oh, for we- her. You know, yeah. she was good in teeth. Yeah, she was good in teeth. So. Can't oh, say but, that yeah, about um, the movie. But. Another movie that ties back to the free show. We watched Angel, what, like six months ago or mm-hmm. however long ago. Uh. Tom Day Simone did Angel 3. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah I don't, Wait, I don't so reckon, was, or was, recommend we, that there one. There was Angel, <laughs> Avenging Angel. Yeah. And then was it just Angel, Angel 3? Angel the final okay. chapter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there, then there was an Angel 4. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there always is after uh, the final chapter. Angel 3 is not good. <laughs> Two's like, negative. I like the first one. That's a shame. The first one, yeah. Yeah, yeah first one was good. I, was, I was surprised. By None the of you guys one. recommended it. I, just I was right to... on the fence. <laughs> yeah, right on the Close. fence. Yeah. That's one of those that in hindsight, you're like, Bleh. it took, yeah, a, that's for took sure. an interesting turn in the yeah. third act, though, I, where yeah. there was just like, my parents don't exist. And I've. Li- it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Go listen to the Angel episode. It's a yeah. good one. I maintain I don't recommend it, but it was. More interesting than I thought it was we going to be. We keep referencing it. Yeah. 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 Uh, you said reform school. Okay, so yeah. you know what we've never done on this show? I don't know if we should. Something tasteful. Prison, <laughs> prison, uh, women in prison movies. <laughs> They're all the same, though. I don't know. Well, I don't think, but I don't think we've done one. Well, yeah, but see, the thing is, reform school girls is like, is this from the mid 80s? That is like a parody of. It's of bad. Uh, uh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I think. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've done the research on this. Was bit. Linda Blair in a prison movie called Chained Heat? Is that a, uh, a women in prison heat. movie? Mm. Okay, we got to look this up. Yeah, no, she was. I, thought, I, thought I remember it being a prison. Well, movie. Linda Blair is in yeah. this movie, Hell yes. Night. Yes, 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 yes. And so now we're getting, we got to go through the because Linda Blair, obviously, you all know she's a very famous actress because she oh, was she in, in <laughs> The Exorcist. Yeah. Right on the Exorcist two, yeah, 
that, is that the one with Leslie Nielsen? <laughs> and repossessed. <laughs> repossessed. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, no, she wow. is in a movie called Chained Heat, and judging yeah. by the poster, it looks like a prison movie. Yeah, it's her behind yeah. bars. So. Is that a Tom DeSimone movie? Yes. Oh, well, so well, there like, you go. That, that, I was distracted by the fact that Sybil Danning is also in it. Well, she's in Reform oh, Girl. I mean, like, that yeah. seems no, like. No, it's directed that's... by Paul Nicholas. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Seems like Sybil Danning is yeah, a part I knew of the she package was in deal. Heat, but and... I couldn't remember if it was a prison movie or not. It, judging yeah. by I mean, the. Here, let me show you guys the poster. I assume, but. Oh, please do. Like, look, the poster is like oh, literally yeah. a woman oh, yeah, behind yeah, yeah, yeah. bars. Yeah. What's so. the one I'm thinking of where oh, she's on the cover? We talked about before. Savage Streets. Savage Streets. Which I thought it. was yeah. like Avenging Force and I got the title all fucked up. Yeah. It's Savage Streets, where Savage it's like Street. she it's a vigilante movie. She's got mm-hmm. the crossbow. She's all in leather. Like I've never suit. seen it. Yeah, yeah. But it seems I'm like sorry, that you one. You just described the perfect Colin movie and yeah. you've never seen it? Yeah. <laughs> I might have to check out I think so. Savage Streets with Linda Blair. I think so. These are the movies that she did. Well, these are the exploitation movies yeah. right. that she did after. So after The Exorcist, she did, uh, like, I think, were they TV movies or something what like that? What was the roller one she did? Roller Boogie. Roller Boogie, yeah. Yeah, she became, well, according to the Internet Movie Database, a sex symbol because of Roller Boogie. Did she, though? <laughs> this is what I have a question. Because okay. I'm, I'm, I think it's I'm the skipping, same question I'm wondering. I'm skipping ahead because I've read the mailbag, but uh, so Igor will be bringing our mail later. Dressed yeah. in uh, some dressed in, pe- <laughs> in period Flo- clothing, some floofy things. Yeah, yeah. with um, heaving bosoms, <laughs> heaving <laughs> bosoms all bosoms. over the place. That's tonight's movie theme. It is, but the sex appeal of Linda Blair. Yeah. Maybe it should exists. I be asking? Yeah, I was like, I feel like you might need to look at Sean for this one I because it, I can, I can hone. I, I I'm can, on the outside of this. I don't get. It's, I don't it's, get it at all. Oh, I mean, I'm not. It's, I'm all right. I'm, I'm gonna be very super. To I'm gonna be very superficial woman, about this. Okay, it's from the neck down. Mm. Okay. Damn, that's rude. It, uh, it's quite it's, hard it's, I'm sorry. You just call her a butterface. I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> butterface. Yeah. What's butterface? Everything like? looks good, butterface. Butter oh yeah. shit, that's good. How have you guys never heard? You that? guys are oh, men, and you've never heard of butterface. <laughs> There's, it's too. Uh, it you are the ones that coined it, you <laughs> sons of bitches. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> Appreciate my candor, please. Um, I, I mentioned during the movie, I feel like it's her face feels like too innocent. Too... Well, you, you mentioned she looks a little like Amy Schumer in this She movie. does, but she also looks, it's very uh, cherubic, like her face. It yeah. looks very young and everything. And I, you know, that connected with the what is shown off in this movie. It's not my fault that they did this. The this heaving movie. bosom. The heaving That's bosom what you're is what's heaving coming bosoms. out in this movie. I thought you guys like the young there's looking. There's a like disconnect. Is... Isn't that a thing with you guys? Not, you, that's no, why you like not the whole necessarily. Girl thing. And, oh, no, no, that's no. Some of it's creepy okay. for some people. And, no, yeah, I'm clarifying. I think that, that's the, always the impression I got. No. The rounder face looks younger, yes. like uh, childlike. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a. It doesn't match with the rest of what's going, what they're trying to do in this movie, and so yeah. it throws me off. So I think and the while costume I, and the hairstyle right, are not helping that. It's not. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. There's a disconnect between it. So whether I'm I'm not saying she's uh, unattractive or ugly or anything. I'm just saying there's a disconnect between the top of her and the bottom of her. I'm just going by what they presented in this movie. Right, but that doesn't Whatever mean she doesn't have in. sex appeal because sex appeal does not no, necessarily rely on your face. That's very true. No, I'm not saying she doesn't. So she doesn't. So but that was Colin's question. About. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah she has okay. sex appeal. All right. I mean, I've seen her in with the the eighties, the pompadour, no, the the frou frou. What do you call it? The, the teased Annie, out an Annie haircut, haircut. Yeah. and the leather hair. cat suit with the okay. split down the middle. Yeah, interesting. I haven't seen. It. I've seen the poster. The poster. Savage yeah, yeah. Streets. That's right. It's the a next, very the next poster. Much must watch Linda Blair movie. Somehow she ended up. There was a line in this movie where some guy is like, "So what are you doing here?" And I was like, "This is Linda Blair's like moment right here to be like, oh, it was my agent basically." So I, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this co- movie comes from uh, the year you said nineteen eighty one. So this is right in the height of the slasher movie craze. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. For those two years, it was a real big craze. That's right. Mm-hmm. Every goddamn movie. I know you guys don't believe me when I say this, but you go. Well, actually, one of you actually did. I think look up like a a, a specific date, mm. didn't you? Or no? I, I thought somebody I did, so. and it was like every movie that came out was we, a slasher. Well, no, we've movie. looked at it, mm-hmm. and it's just like they're all. It's within these, within these like two years. Mm-hmm. So this is where horror was in 1981. Yeah. 
slasher movies. This one comes from the granddaddy of slasher movies. That would be Erwin Yablans. Mm-hmm. Yablans, yeah. yeah Le- Erwin Yablans. Who also produced Halloween. There you go. Thank you very much. Was he, was he uh, Trankus? Was he Trankus International? I thought he was Trankus. How come this wasn't? I don't know. Maybe okay. it's just a separate from that. I don't know. But yeah. er, 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 Maybe Erwin Yablans produced Halloween. He was a legendary producer. Uh, but yeah, gave. I think he also gave like the Evil Dead. Oh, that was Shapiro. Irvin Shapiro. I think so. Gave the Evil Dead guys their shot. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, what's this movie all about, Holly? Uh, this movie is based on a sorority and fraternity hell night, basically, like a hazing. Mm. Is the general theme of this movie. Okay. And so. what happens <laughs> in every? What do you have to do in every hazing? Like, uh, well, first you have a pillow fight in front of a bonfire. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> totally safe, Key. obviously. Uh huh. Key. Yeah. yeah. And then you have a kegger. Naturally. Sure. Which is happening inside, inside the, the uh, fraternity, house. like right, while yeah. the bonfire pillow fights going on. Hundreds outside. of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The kegger did look pretty fun. It did. It did I look know. like it fun. So I was tons into of it. people hitting each right, other right. with pillows. I was like, it's definitely not the frat parties that I went to in college. Like this looked way more fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was actual yeah. activities. More people here, or more people. Yeah. yeah. This people is one of those like things. dream movie uh, frat parties. It absolutely yeah, it is. is. Yeah. Oh, of course. Well, yeah, and um, where everyone yeah. no, because everyone's having fun and no one's sitting in a corner disappointed <laughs> well, because that, that happens a lot. Everybody's just in the middle of the room jumping yeah. right. to the crazy. Like, nobody's 80s left music. out. Everyone's having a good time. Yeah, I was gonna say everyone's having fun with each other. No one's bullying someone right. else. No. Like, yeah. That never yeah, yeah. happened. Like no especially at a frat party. Someone else didn't show up, or you know, frat parties are excuses to humiliate other people. Like that's that's why they exist. Usually. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is in the post Animal House era, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Animal House takes place in like is that the sixties? It's shot in the seventies, but is that like doesn't it take place? That's a period movie, right? Couldn't tell you. I've is seen it, it once. It feels like yeah, I haven't seen it. It may be over that line, just based on like. No, okay. I think it is. I think it's the sixties. Is it really? I yeah. Think so. mm. But that wasn't out too many. It was like three, four years before uh, this movie came out. So mm-hmm. uh, they're just like Halloween was a big hit, and so was Animal House. And let's put them together, and it's like peanut butter meeting chocolate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Magic. That's what we're hoping for. That's, that's all Erwin, it was. Uh, Erwin Yablons right yeah. there. That's not, that's not really what happened. But okay. <laughs> what happened? How did this <laughs> movie come uh, about? It was, it was written by Randy Feldman. Who we Randolph. Know from. It was written by Randolph Feldman, okay, according to those credits. Sorry. Um, you know him as Randy Feldman. Mm-hmm. He wrote Tango and Cash. Ah, yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> a wow, movie we all yeah. agree is amazing, right? Do we? <laughs> I like Tango I and like Cash. I like it too. I, I really have no like it. No problems with Tango and Cash. I know it's stupid, but that's why sure, I like it. That's a fun <laughs> yeah. movie, though. Come on. It lives better in my memory than it does when you actually watch it. Okay, so Randy Feldman wrote Tango and Cash years yeah. later, but uh, so this is his idea. This is his idea. Because he, he said Animal House. No, he. And Slasher movies and Halloween. Yeah, I don't so know. So it's what, pretty much old, dark Animal House. <laughs> That's the idea I don't recall, here. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he was inspired by Animal House, but he mentioned that he was inspired to write this after watching Black Christmas. Oh, because that takes place in a sorority yeah. house. Yeah. 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 So Two completely it. different tones. Very but different, yeah. yeah. But he yeah. got this idea after yeah. watching Black Christmas. Sure. So the idea is going to be, even though we start off the movie with this kind of big set piece, which is this uh, fraternity party. Yeah. The idea is that there's this one, the fraternity president. What is he? Yeah, Senior? Peter Bennett. <clears throat> right. Actor. I don't know. Do we know? Peter. He looked kind of. He's got Kevin one of those. Kevin Brophy. Okay, he's got a jawline that like seems like, hey, he should have been in other movies or whatever. Right, when, but then the teeth fuck that up. Yeah, when <laughs> Linda Blair walks <laughs> into this crowd matter. of people yeah. where he's hitting on this girl at the uh, the coat check Is girl this lettered. Oh yeah, it's coat yeah. check girl, right? Basically, who yeah. apparently flashes him. We don't actually see this. It's no. a very chaste yeah. uh, uh, horror movie. He's like, it is. But he's like straight chaste. up fondling her. Yeah, he does. But she reaches well, out. And she's stroking. like taking her. She's Sean like, is this currently is, stroking Colin. I yeah, just I want you I'm to. I'm trying to ignore, ignore this. <laughs> and then she, I'm just trying to show the audience uh, of Holly, Holly and Michaela and <laughs> of what happened. Like we didn't just watch the movie. Right. But yeah. I, for maybe you forgot. They saw it actually happen in real life. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate the demonstration. Though. But that girl, like, so that he's hitting on this girl, and then Linda Blair mm-hmm. walks in and across the room. He's struck. He's yeah. like, who is that? And so are the other main characters. Like, how is she like the stop traffic kind of girl? The innocent look. 
Is that see? So that is appealing. But I think for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's for me. I'm saying you that's totally get it. You Maybe get it. People just I have can, different tastes. I, can, you know? I, I, I yeah. get it, but I, that's the thing. In a, you know, usually in those movies, well, you either have like the it is somebody who's like, wow, you know, lightning strikes, right. or I suppose the other thing that you're going off of is the way that characters react to other people. Yeah, you know, tells you who they are. Right, but know. that's also her character. She's like the new person in the sorority. Um, and she doesn't want to be a part of it, but she's like she, she's new, and I think that's what is she's the a new toy. I think so. I think that's what the attraction is. Like, oh, oh I've never I seen her before. Is, so I don't know who I she must is. Conquer her. She looks unique. You, I think that's the feeling. I think mm-hmm. that's it. Okay. So he basically then takes. I mean, it's like okay, time to start the initiation. Mm. Uh, and so then there's a caravan of torch wielding, uh, cor- yeah, uh, open yeah. air corvettes car- and T-birds and yeah. Trans-Ams, yeah. <laughs> All they go out to this house, a big, and we a say a house. It's, it's a mansion. It's a yeah, it's a ha- it's horror there, movie. There house. are grounds. Yeah. Yeah. Behind a gated a yes. wall. grand Victorian mansion. Yes. And uh, there's a gargoyle. Oh, uh, everybody, this does feel ironically uh, like a movie that is set on Halloween. Yeah, everyone's in costume. Yeah, I think yeah. that's why. It seems it's, like it's yeah. a Halloween party that yeah. they're at. It's fall so, yeah, is it a foliage. Halloween party or they, it's just the hazing they dress up? They don't specifically say it's a Halloween party, but I mean, it would be like a rush week, which is in the fall. So it could be like a Halloween costume party. Really, yeah. the only reason for that was when they made the movie, they, they vi- envisioned Linda Blair's character being in gothic clothing. Mm. And they were like, how do we make that happen? Like, that's just what I'm picturing is her in this sure. gothic clothes. They didn't, they thought like the idea of kids in like jeans and t shirts running around a house was just cliche and too, stupid. Too spookies. It's, yeah. So they were like, well, how do we get her in period clothes? And they're like, we'll just make it a costume party. Make it a costume party. It's simple. It's, it's as simple, simple as saying this is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But like, it you also, don't really need to question, like, no, all right, it's a costume you could party. Just, I get you it. You could just write that. Yeah. So she's dressed up as a. Just like Victorian gothic bosom, like, yeah. Uh, Victorian, yeah. She's got that that choker, the choker. necklace and everything, and yeah. you know, like I said, the heaving bosom. Yeah. Sure. And uh, the the antagonist is dressed as some kind of sorcerer. <laughs> yes, we did. We went from wizard to sorcerer. Wizard, sorcerer yeah. felt like it fit more. Because, yeah, because wizard. I mean, that can be lots of things, but well, he's kind of futuristic. Yeah, wizard yeah. at that point sorcerer. would have been a blue cloak with the stars on it. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, but, I'm thinking like, and, like the pointy hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. right. So this like, guy is a wizard. Guy's a sorcerer. Yeah. We need a sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. like Sean pointed out, he's got the Doctor Strange cloak on. Kind of does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a different color, but he feels more Doctor Strange. He has that collar on it like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like if Doctor Strange liked crushed velvet. Right. Yeah. Just like well these. Are, these are our central characters. Is him? Yeah. He has a henchwoman who is in a leopard, uh, a leopard yeah, outfit. She's the head of the sorority. Yeah, yeah. That's and she I recognized from V, from which v, I think yes. was like two years later. Yes, um, which she did. Yeah. Then there's the like practical Joker guy, because basically yeah. the idea yeah. is okay. So he takes these new pledges out. The, the sorcerer takes the new pledges Pete. out to. The house. Yes. And big gated house and lets them in. And he tells and, the story of the house in the walk up to the mansion. Right. It's actually pretty good. What like, is the story? What, what what are we dealing with here? Uh, the story is the of, uh, uh, is it, what's the, is there a last name to the family? Like Groff or something? It's like or? Andrew. Uh, um, Garth. Garth. It's Garth. Andrew it's Garth. Garth. It's, it's the Garth family. Yeah. So um, it's basically the story of a man who murdered his, most of his entire family and then killed himself. Mm-hmm. And so he tells the tale of him. Uh, uh, bringing his family up there, killing them, and then killing himself, and having um Andrew being the only one who was not found the next day. This is the son. This is this the one. Was, the son. This is couple, the gorked yeah. son. The gorked one. Allegedly, he killed means. five of his children and his wife, but Andrew was the lone survivor. And I then, think there was, but then there killed, was another. Bo- there was a couple other bodies that weren't three found. children. Two children and a wife. Two I children, a wife. And apparently himself, but yeah. only three bodies were found. Yeah. And then Andrew was never found, and then yes. another body was never found. But this is the standard. This is, the uh, this is what, yeah, a slasher movie is right. built this upon. This is the standard legend, yes. Pillars that you have to have. Right. And this is the legend of the thing that you're came staying before. in this house, and yep. shit happened here. And yeah. so this is the shit that happened. Yeah. Wasn't Garth the name of the town they moved to in Strays? It is <laughs> named they moved to Garth. Connected. Yeah. Garth Algar. 
so yeah, I mean, there you go. So how? I mean, you know, when you heard this legend in this movie, how did you think that it stacked up against? I don't know. Like I like the way it was told. Yeah, I like the whole leading because that whole, was like five I, minutes. Like the, the whole it way it was, but they're the all like leading them up with torches. And I like the yeah. process mm-hmm. that they went through in this movie. The movie's working at this. It point. is. I yeah. think so because I like the whole like the caravan up the the long mm-hmm. winding driveway that leads mm-hmm. up to the mansion and yeah. the hills and everything. That's cool. Yeah, looks cool that they got torches to do it. They're not just driving up there with headlights going on and everything. Everyone like fifty people gathered around to like hear the story that's told pretty well. Going up to the mansion as he shoots the yeah, he's lock off. He's a pretty off. charismatic storyteller. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. I liked it. It's he's good. laying on the uh, the uh, atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere, like, really the thick. theatrics. He's really doing it. Yeah. Oh, so did we mention that the, the gorked one? So this is a family of like... <laughs> the gorked one. They were mongoloids. Can we yeah, say that word? Were, that we're I, okay with mongoloids? I think so, what based is, on what, this movie. This yeah. is a type of movie a genre, also subgenre, which you don't see a whole lot the of anymore. The killer mongoloid movie. Yeah. Which also um, seemed to be like I a think sub- Jason is. I the saw last a movie last Mongoloid. year that had it. Ooh. I don't want to say what it Besides is because like, it's a major um, spoiler uh, of that movie. So, uh, what's the ones? Um, not like Hellfest or something. No, like no, that, no. Yeah. Out in the woods, and the and the they their car broke down, and oh, wrong turn, wrong turn, wrong that turn wrong was the last the one that did that. Yes. Yeah, Those which you know, I was actually thinking, I I thought of that movie while we were watching this because mm-hmm. the way that this one set up, you know. There was the the girl with the the family that was killed. Mm-hmm. You know, there was like she was born and she was like half man, half woman, and she dragged her foot. And then there was right. Andrew, and he was gorked. And there gorked. was the other one, and he was hideous. And I'm like, this is setting up like you could do like a wrong turn kind of thing and actually have like some kind of monster right designs. Right. You know, this that- is also the family from Cabin in the Woods. Right, Basically. killer chainsaw family, yes. yeah, or whatever. Right, killer, uh, the hillbillies, killer yeah, hillbilly yeah. family, yeah. Um, but yeah, it never actually really delivered on that. It, you know, even uh, though it, it kind of set that up, and yeah, it just kind of not like, till like Whoop! a couple shots way later in the movie. Mm-hmm. Then you're kind of like, oh, all right, they're different. They're not just people hanging out. They're people who've probably been uh, underground for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you saw like that mutated. But... Yeah. A little bit. Of... Yeah. So this house has been abandoned. This mansion has been abandoned for years. Yeah. Yes. The pledges every, every year, apparently they, the, the fraternity brings the pledges up here. So let's meet our pledges. Who do we got? We got Linda Blair, Marty as Marty mm-hmm. in the heaving bosom costume. <laughs> yep. We have, Diane. uh, Denise, Denise, Denise the British yeah. lass, yeah. Who is dressed as a flapper? Okay, twenties flapper. Yeah. Uh, then we've got um, Seth, the star Seth. of the movie. <laughs> Second lead. <laughs> Second lead after Linda Blair. Vincent, Vincent Van Patten. <laughs> Van Patten of the Van Patten Hollywood dynasty mm-hmm. uh, as Robin Hood. Yep. Yes. And finally, Jeff. 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 I forgot Hefe. his name. Did you guys get the Robin Peter Hood? Peter Bennett. Barton. Get the Robin Hood reference. It. His dad was in uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. But that would have been yeah. years later. Was it after this? That was like, oh, yeah. it it had to like, be. It was like oh, 93. Yeah. Was it really yeah. that late? Oh, yeah. His dad that was, was in Spaceballs, too. His dad was yeah. in Mel Brooks regular. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and Peter, eight Peter, is enough. Right. Peter uh, Bennett. Yeah. Peter Peter Barton. It's Bennett. Star Barton. of the character Jeff Bennett, maybe. Jeff Bennett. Peter Barton. Jeff, ben- Jeff Bennett. Okay, was Peter in Barton. Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's he the one who's like, Paul, Paul, oh, I dropped my soul, Paul, buddy. That guy, you coming back now? Yeah. You got him. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, so they're the pledges they get locked in. The idea being, this is a classic horror movie trope. Yep. Sure. You just have to house. survive Day until, until dawn. dawn. And yeah. then you become a- We see uh, it till uh, now. Which it's already pretty late because they said it's only going to be, it's only six hours. Yeah. It's California time and it's summertime. I know it looks like fall, but it's only six hours until. Well, I mean, who knows how late this party? Well, they were par- already partying. Yeah, they're so already it's yeah. got to be yeah. like eleven yeah. midnight ish. Well, yeah, so it starts at midnight, right? But they have six hours. They got six hours mm-hmm. until dawn. They just had to hang out in this house. And you're like, well, how hard can that be? What's going to happen? There's yeah, two guys, two girls. Who knows? So immediately, Robin Hood and the flapper. Uh, wander off to the bedroom. I watched that movie. Get Robin Hood and the Flapper. Busy. This is uh, plot line number one. Mm-hmm. Plot line number two: the boring couple, which is our lead, <laughs> the talking couple, kind of <laughs> hang out in front of a fireplace yeah. and don't really talk about. Like, what do you know about them? 
Oh, oh, oh. They're both nerds. And right, they're weird. We know that uh, he's rich. Yep. Comes from a rich, rich family. She is. Her dad was a mechanic. Yep. That's she Romeo changed, and Juliet. Oh, are, are we just watching Ready or Not again? Is this what we're doing? <laughs> this is the haves and the have-nots yeah. have met. And uh, basically, that's all that they really And they're finding about. they have more in common than they think they would. Mm. Yeah. One thinks she saw a witch. One thinks he saw an elf. They're perfect for they're each other. They're both fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you got. Yeah. Meanwhile, it turns out that Robin Hood is a surfer. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, he is. Which he was not written to be a surfer, but uh, Mr. Van Patten was, was actually a surfer. a surfer, and they're like, no, nah, let's just let him roll. It's with better it. that they use real life yeah. stuff in this. Well, this is <laughs> a great convincing. scene in the movie, though, because, like. Is it? <laughs> well, in great, this movie, I'm put I think great it's funny. In this movie, I think it's funny. <laughs> because he gets to, maybe this is the thing, then. This is a total ad lib, right? Yeah. He gets to, so imagine. There's this half naked girl on a bed. I think at this point he's in his Done. boxer shorts, right? Yeah. And she he, she's like, "Well, I just want to talk and find out a little bit more about you." Mm-hmm. And so he's like, "Well, I'm a surfer." And then he proceeds to jump up basically on her and do a whole he tells the tale. surfing uh demo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very enthusiastic. I was convinced very. that he was going to. Uh, I think that was his best acting in this movie. <laughs> I would agree. Probably because he wasn't acting. Yeah, that's exactly he was just why. Recounting a tale. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Jesus Christ, he's terrible even at that. What do we yeah. think of Vincent Van Patten's acting ability and further career? On par for 1981. No, uh, come on. He's oh, a come wretchedly on. horrible actor. Wretchedly horrible. Come on. <laughs> I have seen worse. I'm sure that's that worse, bad. but he's bad. He's not that bad. I'll give him some credit. He's not that bad. He's bad. <laughs> Unemployable. I was not. I, I was Unemployable. not brought out of uh, this 1981 horror movie based on his acting. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I was fine with it. I've seen worse. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's. Uh, Did you not see that surfer story? Come on. I was convinced that man surfed some waves. Because <laughs> he did. Because he, he did. Yeah. Exactly. He just had he, to sell. Yeah. Well, I, I, was mean, I caught a tube and whatever, and the surf was. And he hit those lips. But I mean, this was not his. First job, and it was not his last. Apparently, he'd been doing no, it for he's 10 still years. Working, at this point. Still working. Still working. Still working. I see him regularly on TV. I can tell you that. Yeah. I watch The Real Housewives, and he's married to one of them. And the greatest acting I've ever seen him do is two of The Real Housewives were having a physical fight in, in his driveway. And in, in, in his driveway, in his garage, he has like his man cave in there. So he has like a fridge full of beer, right? And it's one of those garages that has like the little windows on the top. And you see this fight happening in the, in the back of the shot. You just see his head poke up through this window. <laughs> and he's just watching them fight in the driveway is the funniest shit. I'll just show you guys when we're Please done recording do. this shit. It's for him. fucking hilarious. That's what you should do. It's like, oh yeah, shit's going down. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's a goddamn Hollywood hero. I think he has Might a gambling be. problem. Oh. Yeah, Probably. every time he's on, he's always hosting poker nights. I mean, if you're on that show, work. don't you have one problem or another? No. Yep. It's just good the normal well. people. No, they, yet they are rich white women that most of the time don't work. Well, yeah. So uh, I mean, problem. I mean, his wife is Eileen Davidson, who is a um, soap actress who still works a fuck ton. But there's like a thought that like she works because he has a lot of gambling debts because like literally all he ever does on that show is host poker tournaments Probably. and always playing in poker tournaments I assume if his dad's like super loaded well was he passed was, away yeah. Yeah. like I mean it seems like he he probably always grew up with money I imagine yeah. so I, yeah. so, I don't know like don't when so. Dick Van Patten be- I mean I just remember he was the dad on 8 is enough but I know yeah. he had done Mel mm-hmm. Brooks things after that you know mm-hmm. and I'm sure he had something before it I don't know he was in a ton of TV too yeah. Yeah. Dick Van Patten yeah mm-hmm. um so now that we've got our four people together and paired off mm-hmm. in this dusty old mansion where Linda Blair goes around and lights every goddamn candle. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, though. It's, the it's sorcerer and the leopard <laughs> the lady Supreme. and the peg leg. Dr. Strange and She-Ra. All right. Yep. There we go. Dr. Strange, Basically. She-Ra, and Long John Silver. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because the other guy's got a parrot on his shoulder. It does. So what is Linda Blair? Yeah, I know. We need a nickname. Jane Eyre. She's not a Jane Eyre. She's Jane Eyre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So they are, why do they come back to the uh, location? Because they are going to facilitate a haunting, a haunted house. Okay. So here we go. We're half an hour into this. This We finally, this is, we've set it up. Yeah. So pledges, staying at house. 
other guys are going to go and try fuck and them. fuck with them. Yep. And there's one scene that I've I've always wanted to see this done like in real life because mm-hmm. I the technology in 1981 wasn't there. Hell, it's right. not even here now. Right. Uh, they pulled it off. But there is the scene where, you know, there's like screams happening through mm-hmm. the house all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the hell? And they find the, you know, the speaker. The, the speaker. Mm-hmm. But there's the scene where Linda Blair sees a ghost. Yeah. The ghost is. A we still don't know if this is real yeah, or what not. What the fuck was that? We don't know. I if totally this is, forgot about that. Until yeah, now. we don't know if this is real or not. Yeah. Well, oh. I assumed because what they didn't show us was the little projectors yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the idea I think it's supposed to be that everything's taking place there is a recording. It's but a fucking is, hologram in this movie. Yeah, a like hologram a projector. Yeah. <laughs> in nineteen, <laughs> they did it in uh, yeah. Lord of Illusions, the Clive Barker mm-hmm. movie. But he, he actually finds ninety five. Uh. But he actually finds the projector. Like, oh, it was. Look at, oh, oh I can put my hand through it, and it's not really a thing. Yeah. But in this movie, yes, yeah, she sees a ghost and for a long time. Becomes convinced that she actually saw a ghost. And the movie never lets the audience off the hook saying no, never. it was a uh, projection. Right. Yeah. It's very bizarre. It is. It is. And it doesn't ghost. and it doesn't really like it doesn't match the theme because like we already said, it like doesn't. the killers are real people. Right. There's they're, killers in this movie. They're, they're fucked up, but they're real people. There's, there's, there's nothing like supernatural. Yeah. That we don't. Get, so like, that's, if that it is the is, only part where there's like ghosts. Yeah. Plus, it's like a little it's I mean. It's pretty good quality for some frat kids. Yeah. Right. Right? I don't I wouldn't think they'd be able to pull it off. Yeah. Well, you either go you buy that thing somewhere or uh yeah. you have um, your friend dress up and put rice krispies yeah. all over his face and film it. Then you got to project it. Yeah. All it takes is rice yeah. krispies. It looked face. it looked very um haunted mansion. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm okay with them not telling us what it was. Yeah, I'm okay with it too, I like actually. That. I'm just like, all right, what, what cool. was the point of it, though? What was the scary. point of that movie at all? I'm it's okay, making I'm them okay scared of the place yeah. it was haunted. dismissed by them, and, you know, they don't go back what to it. What so purpose like, right, did fine. it serve in the movie if it's dismissed None, by them? Then? Exactly, it's pointless. Yeah. Yeah. But it's see, pointless. This, is, this is what I was actually thinking. About the point of time, because I'd seen this movie before, and I know that several of you had not, and I, never I was actually sitting there going, like, do we... Like, I know we have the legend, so I assume that you guys are kind of on the, well, this is a movie where the legend actually is true. There's people in the house and, you know, some kind of physical serial killer, right, or slasher. But at this point in the movie, the movie's not tipping its hand that way. It's going like, you know, oh, the, you know, we got people in the house. What's the conflict here? The conflict is that right, the frat we're, we're, people. We've been waiting for the conflict yeah. for a little while. Well, yes. th- that's why I'm like, are are they succeeding with the narrative of like it's the frat guy is going to fuck with them? You're still going like, there's more to this, right? There's like going to be an actual threat, mm-hmm. danger. Yeah. Is wait, that what you were thinking wait, at, at this, that point? At this point, we've seen. Um, well, I mean, at this point, they they killed uh, the the sorority girl. Which just comes out of nowhere, they right? They grab her from the thing from below the Harry hole hands, in the ground. Yes. hands come up from a yes. hole and pull her down. I, well, oh, and I, she gets beheaded. Yeah. But it's very, again, uh, right at the oh, point of impact, true. we cut away. Yeah. We, we are waiting for conflict, but we also know that, like, we know going in, as we're watching this movie, and this is based on a 2019 audience, that uh, aside from um, the sorority people fucking with them, there is going to be another element. There's going to be an actual something that kills them all off. We know this is coming. We're waiting for it. Well, we know it's coming. Okay, so how well did the movie calibrate that for you at this point in the film? Because this is right it before... Comes, it comes out of... <sighs> We don't know if it's going to, because we're still, I think, um, at the point where we don't know if it's going to be someone dressed up as someone from the family killing people or if it's going to be the actual family killing people. Like, we don't know what the source of the menace is going to be. Um, I think when the the uh, sorority girl gets grabbed from below, I think that, for me, set it off and just like, okay, it's the family. Like, it's the actual people are still here killing people right because it's missing like i mean the red herring would be that there's some kind of you know it's like we we're coming back here 
this year and like you know should we be doing this because you know what happened last year when right. that one that's, kid went crazy that, right that's not here you know, right. or whatever and he's still locked up in the asylum right. and then later it turns out he got loose and yeah you know, that's not like, a factor in this movie no nope. so we're not <clears throat> expecting any outside source yeah any uh somebody's got but know, without revenge this, on their mind it kind of doesn't give like this pr- forward propulsion right. now you're just kind of like watching we're people waiting. hang yeah. out yes it's not the most clever clever no. hang we're out. not even seeing like uh, like shadows in the brush wandering by as the, the characters are there. So there's no um, there's no uh, uh, foreshadowing of any sort of presence until someone grabs that girl out of the hole in the ground. Yeah. We get nothing before that. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? Well, right. I guess you're assuming then that it's the the, the, the story is right. that's what we're I would Yeah, I was on. assuming it's true. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in relatively quick succession, the three practical jokers are dealt with by the killer. Mm-hmm. Indeed, right? Do, well, it's a slasher movie, so we should probably, for our audience, catalog the slayings. What happens to each one of them? First, we have May, who, like we said, is beheaded. This is the, yes. the Sheena. This, this, yep, Shira. She got um, battle axed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say that, but it like. You see, like a second of it before it cuts <laughs> but away. But I did get the That's impression cool. that her head separate, like right. her body dropped away from her head. I'm yes. like, Ooh. yeah. But I, it was really I got that. Yeah. It was so quick. Though. Yeah, right. It but was I'm okay really with quick. I, I thought it was effective. Yes, I, I enjoyed that one. It worked. I got but, it. Yeah, it's cool. But this is not a gore movie. No, no. it's yeah. not a gore At movie. All okay. No. Well, then what happens to the other ones? Um, and then we've got uh, the pirate glasses, yeah. yeah, whose head is basically turned around like a Jason move. Well, yeah. at that point, we actually I think he's the one who first we see the actual killer right on screen. Like he turns around flashlight in the face like, yeah. oh, my God, it's yeah, a before yeah. maniac. And then he grabs the head, and does the Jason move, yep. <laughs> turns yes. his head completely. Around. Not as cool as the Jason execution. of That's it, though. true. But when did Jason it's a lot slower? Do it? I think that was after this. So I was going to say, because uh, by 1981, we're on Friday the 13th, part two. Right. It's, and and it's, it would have came out the same year and they and wouldn't have seen it. Still not as good as Halloween 4, the guy who gets his head turned around and his spine pops out of the back of his head. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. but that was, what year was that? 84? No, Halloween 4 is 88. 88? Yeah, yeah. 88. I was like, that was later. Right, was the Halloween's were much later. more spread out. Yeah. 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 That's very true. I know M- Michael Myers, after 81, like sat the whole party out. Uh, of the, the, the slasher sequel. So then uh, the wizard, or sorry, the sorcerer, sorcerer. gets a scythe because yes. he's got those laying around. Yes, in he's your mansion like estate. impaled to a tree. Yeah. 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 yeah right mm-hmm. through the heart. Um, okay, They're so gone. Once, once that's happened, then yeah, we know the that the only people alive are the four people in the yeah. mansion. And yeah. I, I like that they do that pretty quick because then we know for sure that at this point, anything that's happening in the house is for sure actually happen. Right. Yeah. There's no more screaming yeah. in the house, yeah. which was set up through speakers. All the gizmos are yeah. not doing <laughs> yes. that anymore. All right. So let's talk about sex, ladies. Specifically oh. sex between Robin Hood. <laughs> Sean, Sean, you, you can, can sit this one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Colin, have fun. Sorry, I'm, I'm on one side of the bar <laughs> and I'm looking across the... Leave if you feel uncomfortable. Um... Yeah, actually, I'll see would upstairs. you stay, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to stay for safety? Like, I'm curious about the uh, the actual mechanics of sex. Is explained to us by now. No, as explained to us by the movie Hell Night. Okay, because <laughs> no one in this movie knows. No, they don't sure. know how to have explain sex. this to me. Like, what what are they doing? These two characters they're just rolling around on the bed in their underwear. When we first no, first of all, they're surfing. Yeah, there's yeah. bed surfing. Yeah. That's then the we, foreplay, Colin. Then we cut away, and then we come back. And when we come back, what's going on? Well, first they were napping. And no, then- that, that's when we come back. Yeah. When we come back, she's still wearing her garters and all that other stuff. There's no sex in this. He's no. asleep. Uh huh. And then we're they like, don't oh, know how. This is after they had sex. No, right? They don't no, they don't say that. But well, he's asleep. And, well, they're both sleeping, and they then were she drinking. Wakes up. And they could have passed out. And I okay. think that's what happened. All right, and because she no gets one's up. gonna get dressed a little bit. But she puts the guard. Have you ever back had whiskey and, and quaaludes? You pass well, out. Colin. There's quaaludes in this movie. <laughs> you Have pass you out. seen Wolf of Wall Street? Okay, I'm with you then. Dude I'm with you. Fun. So basically, they get they they're like, let's go upstairs and fuck. First of all, we're gonna talk for a little while. In which case, I'm gonna get very animated 
doing a uh, surf yeah. impression. That wore him out, man. He needed a nap he, after that. that they it. both fall asleep. Yep. She wakes up sometime later. She goes and investigates the whole house yep. and uh, uh, tries to find like the makeup desk counter thing. Right. She the, vanity. The, yeah, the, the vanity. The yes. vanity. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Then we cut away. We, when we come back to them, now they're both awake they're and rolling they're in the hay. tickling each other. Yes. Which is very exhausting. I don't know if you've tickled anyone recently. Right. Exhausting. That kind of ends with him getting up. I have so up. much insight into Sean's life right now. <laughs> what? How did exhausting. that scene end? Because again, you're like, well, um, here they're literally, literally, they just lay back down. Just like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, they were literally, shadows. they were just done. They, yeah. they moved, she laid down. They moved and to he shadows got up. on the wall. Oh shit! Where you're like, this is the scene, and because the movie, it was like. You know, he pulled actually, her up in the shadows, and then they both fell back down in real life. I thought, like, like ah. at least the bra was going to come off in the shadow, nothing. right? But nothing. There's no. like a shot of yeah. a they door. That's what it was. It was so, the ominous shot of the door with the shadow yeah, on it. Like, Ooh, maybe there's. One. So let's talk about this scene. So obviously, Tom DeSimone was not unused. Shy? He yeah. was not unused to directing right. sex at all. He had done a lot of adult movies, and he was not, and he was fine with it. Um. The actress, whose name is Suki Goodwin, mm, she Suki. had a clause in her contract that said she was fine with getting nude and doing a sex scene. So it was about to happen. You can thank Mr. Vincent Van Patten. Fuck that guy. He said that he was uncomfortable with the situation, especially because his dad had such a wholesome TV show. Uh, so your sex scene was turned into a tickle fight. Tickle oh. fight. Yeah. It's the wow. it's, so it's like the opposite of the Bob Saget situation, huh? <laughs> like is the Bob Well, Bob Saget's, Saget's like, "Oh, you think I'm a wholesome guy cuz I was on Full House. Well, I'm going to tell you about my dick and my stand up." Right, like that's shit. his whole shtick. Yeah. 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 So this is like the opposite of that. It's like, "Well, my dad's known for being wholesome, so I guess oh, I got to be wholesome yeah. too." Hmm. So Good there Lord. was yeah, it was set to be a pretty decent sex scene, plenty of nudity and So he's yeah. definitely a trust fund kid then, right? Yeah. So it's definitely <laughs> Like they might yeah. take down my trust fund percentage if I yeah. do something that makes the family look bad. Basically, it is the that's most what bizarre that scene that I've ever. Well, I mean, the whole experience of like those three scenes, yeah, I, I the, guess, were like, yeah, it's they're, weird. They're awake yeah. and where they're about to fuck, and then and they're, they're tired. Asleep. And then they, you know, and then now <laughs> next time they're like getting busy, but they're just tickling each other. But like, and then in that scene, they're like, ah, okay, good, we're done tickling. I was watching, I was watching like interview on like the special features with Tom DeSimone, and he was describing like that whole scenario of what happened, and he literally finishes by going. I hate that scene. <laughs> <laughs> but like, why not? Yeah. So much disdain. <laughs> why not just like hint at it then? Like, why not just show like a close up of like his hand undoing her bra, and then yeah. cut to another scene, cut back, and, and they're both always, like post coitus. I know. Sheets I know. Held over yeah, boobs. exactly. Why not do that? Which is a classic move yeah. instead of I, a I, weird I, tickle. Fight. I really feel like he was so used to just directing full on sex that he was just totally lost. Like, I don't know what to do now. Right. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't I don't know how to cover this without yeah. showing. Well, because, I don't know how to but do this any now. anything, but <laughs> but he's saying that even the implication of sex. Would be going against a wholesome, you Basically. know, it, apparently. Yeah. Basically, yeah. so, so, but this like underwear tickle fighting is fine, yeah, because that's it's fine. That's just people tickling each other. Well, I'm <laughs> don't but like, tickle Dick people Green in Pat their underwear, in his underwear and, yeah. most of this movie, like, uh, okay, for, all right, for sure, all of the movie, yeah, I would say mostly, yeah, all right, yeah, okay. Whatever you so say, there, man. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vincent Van Patten. Yeah, oh boy. thanks a lot, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's just that's just it it's is bizarre. it reads as weird. Really yeah, fucking bizarre. Red one. Um, but eventually the two of them do wander off, or she wanders off. No, she stays. He wanders off because well, she wanders off. No, he wanders off to use the restroom, and then that's when the uh, mongoloid comes in. Yeah, and we don't see what happens to her at that point. She is she is falling asleep, and then all of a sudden he grabs her by the face like he's been doing to everybody. Because that's face how grab. you grab people. The face Just grab. By the with one again, hand. it's a power move. Dominance. Colin. It doesn't work. Dominance. You grab, uh, have you grabbed anyone hands. by the face Not before? Just this. Because you just do that, the, just and the, the person just kind of backs away from. It. That's the power move. Dominance. There's nothing to grab onto there. I don't know. You I really want to it. grab you in the face right now. I know you wouldn't be able to hold on to me. I don't want to. You I just wouldn't want be able to assert do my dominance in the fact that like I'm, I'm fucking grab you guys your are face. Fucking crazy. Okay. Anyway, it would pretty, throw you like off the balance. alien could do that. He's got very long fingers. Um. So, she Duder comes back yeah. to the bed, 
and throws back the covers. And instead of a horse's head, there's her head. And then we're like, nope, not, no, her. not her no. head. But I didn't fucking get the like, the we were sitting there going very, like. It's very quick and it's a dead head and they're both blonde and it's very, yeah, it's yeah, confusing. It's a, well, because the movie yeah. also does this thing where like she doesn't know what his, she keeps calling him Wes, but his yeah. name's actually Seth. Yes. Yeah. So it's like she doesn't know who he is. And then it's like uh, he comes out like, there's this dead chick in my bed. Like, who? The and sorority like, girl. and Yeah. And you're like, does, like he just, didn't know yeah. her name either. Then they're like, where's Denise? And we're like, who the fuck is Denise? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Denise was the flapper. And yeah, this yeah, is, it was yeah. confusing. It's a very confusing moment. We had a very uh, lengthy discussion in the yeah. middle of the movie. Like, wait, who's who? Yeah. And who's dead? And who's where? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what's, leopard what? leopard girl is the head in the bed. Yeah. Right. And the flapper is gone. Like a, do- a really bad yeah, doctor. We don't know where book. she went. <laughs> she leopard went head to... is dead in the bed. <laughs> leopard head is dead in the bed <laughs> by Dr. Seuss. And she went to the killer's lair, which again, slasher movie staple. You're eventually going to have to stumble upon the sure, lair yeah, of dead the people. The collection of bodies, yes. What is Linda Blair and Peter Barton doing? Okay, just overview. What is the... what what? What's going on with <laughs> with their? What are they? Because at some point they discover that there's dead people. Yeah, they do how did that yeah. happen? Now I can't remember. I mean, this, they go down in the basement. Yeah, I mean, there's dead people down there. Why did they go to the basement? Because they, they found that trap door. Because the dude came because out of the floor. Yeah. but something there. they were cowering in. No, maybe which they is weren't. not a bad scene. I like the dude coming out of the floor. Yeah, well, yeah, because he I rises up, Michael right. Myers, Slowly like as, yeah, uh, yeah. in the shot under him. a carpet. Yeah, and yeah. and so when like he's, and when he starts coming up, there's no music playing. There's right, just, he's just doing it. Yeah, I dig so it. So I like that. That seems yeah. cool. And then they go down, and it turns out there's catacombs under this place where right. tunnels we and assume everything. That the, Again, two movies in a row where they're just like tunnels, tunnels underneath shit. Tunnels are the solution to there. everything. Yes. It turns out that there is the, the mongoloid killer dude, Andrew, mm-hmm. yeah. and also another more hairy uh, yeah, family with a member. Beard and shit. Mm-hmm. Looks like a Hills Have Eyes character, but yeah. I didn't know who he is. Is that the dad? It is it's a brother? Dad, it's dad, right? That's one of the siblings. Or is it one of the siblings? Yeah, because they said Andrew survived. So but we know then... that we know the dad is dead, and we know like the mom is dead, and we know the sister, one of the is, sister. Dead. sister is dead. Somebody so... got their throat cut. I can't right. remember who so that was. So it's just like Andrew and another sibling were not there. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And that feels accurate. So there's yeah. pursuit through the tunnels. There's yeah. eventual pursuit creepy. through mm-hmm. the uh, whoever is who's traversing the tunnels like they look creepy because mm-hmm. they're shown in just shadow with the light shown behind them but they're whole it feels like you know when um in aliens when the aliens are moving through the tunnel and everything yeah that's kind of what it feels like well this is because you shoot movies in the dark you, yeah you, you, know, you got like your one light source or whatever right. somewhere but it, wor- but it works yeah like, because yeah. you can't it's see anything creepy like this is why horror works well in these because you, your mind's filling in the blank of yes. like what's actually there yes. yeah um but then they 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 end up like uh they go through a hedge maze they end mm-hmm. up, because The Shining came out the year before, they end up uh, going to the gate. There's mm-hmm. a whole thing about getting Vincent getting Van, Pass, yeah, Vin- Van Patten yeah, over the gate. Get over. He's going to rip his nuts. He has a whole, like... Uh, pl- he gets little- out, goes to the police station. Oh, yeah, there's a whole thing. He's trying to get help. They don't believe him because it's hell night, and there's been multiple... Multiple. Fror- All uh, the sororities are calling and sorority. in and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because that's multiple. what police do. They the just go, like, fuck like, it, it's all a joke. Like, you hooligans, the next one that comes in, you're it's, going in the yeah, slammer right. kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. Drunk yeah. tank. It's like, all it's the around. 50s, but in the right. 80s, it's still the... Again, yeah. there's that connection. So they don't believe him, and so Homeboy steals a shotgun from the As police station. As you do. <laughs> steals not only a shotgun, a shotgun that was used in a murder. I have to believe. It has He's, an evidence tag. Right. Like, he stole is, evidence. This is a stolen evidence and a stolen firearm. There are multiple felonies. Yeah, this guy, he's going to jail if he survives the rest of this movie. Yeah. And he's going out there stealing cars. Bring the police to tell right, them where I'm yeah. going. I'm going up to Groff yeah. Manor. I mean, I pre- if if I had to send a friend out to like go find people to save me, if he didn't do this, I'd be disappointed. Like this yeah. is what he needs to do: steal weapons, steal a car for someone who has to go and call the police and get him to come to where we are. So, okay, yeah. so he's, so he's doing the and right thing. Committed, like he's going back. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this he is in where I believe the that entire he was, time. No, he was back in his like uh, you know pirate shirt. Yeah, but it wasn't buttoned up. It was no, still just like a loose shirt. Like a pirate yeah. shirt. But he, what, did he, he had pants on, yeah. right? I, 
Yeah. He had pants on. Did he have pants yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, uh, yeah. Like in the police station, I don't remember seeing him below the waist. So no, he had his, he the had counter his, and yeah. stuff. He had the okay. leotards All right. back on. Pants. Okay. Okay. So here's what we've got. We know that Vincent Van Patten is our second lead, right? right. He has now uh, acquired the uh, ability to defend. He's headed back to the house. Right. Yep. Uh, our heroes have basically made it out almost of the house and then for some dumb reason have to go back, back into in. the house don't no 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 don't have to they decide to that's right because we that's were saying difference. that it would have been better if like it was raining or something and they're like right. we have if to get out of the rain and go they back can't to the house. stand outside yeah, right a, at the gate and just wait like it why wasn't it storming it should have been storming right. couldn't they afford it uh, yeah, yeah no rain towers right. and shit but they have no reason to have to go back into the house yeah. they, they do and we're like you're dumb because you're going back into the house dumb and they do this multiple times yeah, yeah. They Seems like they're than out, once. and they're in, and they're out, yeah. and they're in. Yeah. There was a scene when they got out through the catacombs. Yep. And there's like a secret door, and we're like, they're out. There's that leads stairs to the garden, that, and yeah. they go back in. The yeah. next scene, but yeah. the, when they're back, there's stairs in, that lead up, and they end up back in a room. Yeah, they're yeah. always back in the same room. Like we get the impression they're barricaded in this one room. This is a safe zone, right? Where yeah. one of them's cradling the other one, and basically like, oh, it's so horrible that something. Like, sure, because yeah. right. that's what the boring couple does. They just cradle each other and do nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until Van Patten comes back with his fucking shotgun, he does and fucking Van blasts. Patten is the fucking driving force of this movie. <laughs> well, but this is what I was hoping for, and I didn't actually get it because Van Patten does blast the dude away. Then the ah, dude comes true. back and he blasts him again. And he blasts and you're him like, again. This is what we needed more of. Yeah. yeah, but it turns out that's when we find out. Twist. There's two of them. Right. Two. And the second one ambushes Van Patten, and bam, his shotgun is discarded. And so uh, old uh, Jeff can't do anything about it because he injured his leg falling down some rocky Apparently, stairs into the yes. catacomb. Yeah. So Linda Blair has to become final girl. Yes. And find the strength within herself to what well, you were saying during the movie. Maybe this I is did. a point to bring this up. I think so. What were you saying about horror movies and uh, I, the portrayals well, of women? Well, I say the horror movies get derided for the portrayal of women as the victim, but more often than not, you find out, uh, you know, in movies like this, especially like um, she becomes the strong one. Like the, the male is disabled and she has to decide for herself that she is not going to be the victim. Um, in this case, she decides like the shotgun is there in the middle of the floor. She's going to go get it in order to save herself and him. Like she's deciding to take control of the situation she's in in order to survive. And mm -hmm. I think that is more often than not the narrative of a lot of these horror movies. Well, at least the older ones. Yes. The, newer the older ones, ones don't the have this because the right. newer ones say she's a fucking strong badass at the beginning and then she's a badass at the end. She right. saves it. No. But I, that doesn't work the same no, it, as like it's she's not, just it's an ordinary an person. Right. There's no arc to it. They're who not finds this the character like, is not yeah, changing. Right. Which in is the, the moment, the stress. Do. You're right. able to find this thing within you, and you know, right? Which is you didn't know you could do it more in these movies, and that's what we're seeing yeah, here. And we we're and we were saying that we think that the focus on women being portrayed like as victims, or whatever, it's not usually the main character they're talking about. It's usually the side characters, mm. the ones that are you know showing their boobs, and then they die two seconds later. You right. know, those are the ones people focus on. Right? Mm. Yeah, that's and they you don't know. focus Which, on like. Also, I have like, if we really want to dig into this, sure. the, the thing is like. It's kind of fucked up to like it's it's a backwards concept to demonize those women because they are choosing to have enthusiastic consensual sex and yet that's a problem that's in the context of this that, movie. Right, that's exactly. another thing that we're like getting into the just like Yeah. We're like why is that, that a problem? That's it, that yeah. shouldn't be a problem. The yeah. fact that they yeah. Die afterwards is not part of their choice. You know exactly. I mean? like, yeah. That's a, it's not a direct consequence of their choice. To right, do that. Exactly. Like, it's, it's not their just, choice yeah. to die. It, I mean, it's really just another way of like slut shaming women. It kind of is. Much, yeah. It really is. Well, and some of it has always been like, there's, <clears throat> see, this is, you're, you're, the, the people that are against this often take the point of view of like worst case scenario. They right. think that somehow you're equating through like, uh, you know, nudity and sex preceding violent gory death right that, that you're this one qua two. one causes somehow, the other yeah some exactly fucked up yeah dude out there in the audience or you're warping dudes maybe that's what you're warping the kids right. to see this to you know become sexually aroused and then follow it with, with violence, violence and yes. so then they're going to equate the two and i'm like mm -hmm. i don't 
No, I uh, don't talk to fucking serial killers. The, they have problems. You should. But I think like most people read it the way that normal people do. Yeah. Where you are, you know, you have empathy for the person who gets killed. Absolutely. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This is because yeah. you assume the point of view. This is what movies do. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That's what they're trying to do. And yeah. if the and if the actual killing scene is within that much close proximity to um, an, a sexual act. It's a really vulnerable situation, so you're even more horrified for that. That is why you mm-hmm. do right. it. Yeah. Exactly. You kill that a is. person yeah. while yeah. they're on the toilet. You mm-hmm. kill a person while they're taking a bath or in the yes. shower. Or yeah. right. It's the most vulnerable. You know, the, mon- you know. the monster in the bed. Like That's mm-hmm. when you're f- in your safe space, you're fe- right. feeling vulnerable. Like, Anything that is happening yes. in bed, is exactly. like, that is the safe space. Exactly. Right? We're told from uh, a young age, hey, if you pull the covers over your head, you'll be fine. But right. but it's in the it's in the area of the bed like that is the place you will be safe, and so we find them violating that space. It's mm-hmm. especially frustrating because the kind of people that level these criticisms uh, rejoice when they see the same kind of act depicted in a higher brow content like Game of Thrones. You know, like mm-hmm. people get killed in vulnerable situations all the time on Game of Thrones. There's lots of nudity and violence that are paired together in Game of Thrones, and yet that is a like worldwide phenomenon of a television series. Yeah, but, but I yet, hear the we, same criticism yeah. leveled against Game of Thrones. I'm like, I, but, say, but, I, I was going to say, I yeah. don't even think that it's, I don't think that the criticism is coming from people that praise Game of Thrones. I think it's coming from people like my parents who would never watch either one. But the thing True. is, no. the whole genre of fantasy hasn't been thrown in the garbage because of Game of Thrones. Fantasy is still considered a pretty legitimate oh, uh, genre yeah. of mm. entertainment, whereas yeah. horror is considered trash altogether by those yeah. people. Right. Yeah, They're just, no. just misogynistic and vile, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, there's no, mm-hmm. yeah, nobody finds any strength in this genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Well, okay. Well, there you go. You didn't expect that on the Saturday Night Freak Show. This is a little. Yeah, <laughs> hey, but this is where we should. should. This is the, the they good stuff. Should. Um, that's right. No, you did expect us to. That's why you listened to this. Right, show. We had a good gotcha. synopsis on the 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 history horror history of the mid aughts last yeah. week. So you know, yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's right. Slasher movies are good for you. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> right. You can quote me on that. Uh, yeah. Drink your milk. Watch your slasher movies. <laughs> Thumbs up sticker with Colin. Like, yeah. Slasher movies. They're good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> Um, but in the end of this movie, uh, it does come down to a final girl mm-hmm. so, uh, scenario where. Uh, uh, Jeff is uh, thrown out a fucking thrown window, window. by uh, the dude. We don't really know conclusively what happened. Who, to yeah, wh- who's who? Van Patten. Jeff? No, no, no. Uh, never mind. Van Patten. Yeah, we don't. We don't yeah. see what really happens. That happens. No, he gets pulled screen. into shadows. We hear and a gunshot, and then we don't ever see him again. Nope. Yeah. He said, "Dad said I'm done for today. Yeah, for, <laughs> I'm gonna go home for <laughs> being. The ma- I, no, I he needed- said." Dad said I'm done for the day, so I'm gonna like, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I felt robbed because I needed a scene. There was also like there a much to do about uh, uh, Jeff's character wandering out into the hedge maze because he saw a light. Yeah, fuck that guy. But from yeah. the window, he's like, yeah, "Look, I'm looking out from the." They're in. This is when they're in that room, the safe space. This is when this is when Denise was missing, and he thought that it might be Denise out in the yeah. Garden. So right. like, you yeah. stay here, we Linda Blair, and just dead. Yeah. barricade yourself in this room. But we never see his point of view from the window, so it never really registered right, to me. We should. I had to actually think about like, what the fuck is he doing out here? Then he discovers. I they did the, show it. No, they, they never no. show the point of view shot. Mm-hmm. It's nope. just him going, there's a light out in the garden. I'm going to go out there. You stay here, which is the dumbest fucking logic in a horror yeah, movie. Yeah, it's really stupid. And then he goes out and finds the kill room or whatever, where everybody's all he hung up all dead. The, the, yeah, the he finds the, the sorcerer. Yeah, they're he in two the different places. Sorry. Yeah. Right, yeah. And uh, then when he comes back, then they're attacked and he gets thrown out the fucking room. She goes up on there's calisthenics up over the, the top of the roof of the place. Uh, and she has to end up fighting the uh uh andrew We've, mongoloid yeah. andrew yeah right. that's right this movie's got things against mongoloids that's why yeah, she they, gets these movies don't get made point. Point. yeah because right. seth, be- seth had stolen a car and came back Right, and I'm he, remembering this movie as and then we he, talk about and then it right he parks now. It out, a lot that he goes parks on it in this outside movie. the gate, and all of you started freaking out because he didn't ram the gate. He should have rammed the gate. He yeah. should have, but then later on it comes back into play. It, Lin- it, Linda it, Blair it gets does. out. Right. Well, what did we establish before? Because the car won't start, but earlier we told you, listener, Linda you Blair's dad owned a garage, so she knows how to work a car. Bam! You thought that wasn't going to come back, but you yep. were wrong. But could we have not? Could we have not just gotten to the point quicker if the car had just started? Yeah. 
Yeah, we like, could have. We didn't necessarily we didn't need, need her to be able to fix the car. Didn't if need she it. just got into just it. Just got and, in the car. And the same thing happened. She drove away, got a, attacked by the mongoloid yep. on the roof, and her backing into... Which I, I like the scene. Yeah, yeah. it's a I cool scene because yeah. I like the way everyone ends up. Because she, um, the she tries to drive away. The mongoloid gets right into the windshield, and then she freaks out and has to like back up and then turn around and then drive into the fence, which, which is now tilted. Which is down. tilted down because yeah, she backs earlier pointy. and spears the last mongoloid right onto it, which is very cool. This whole yeah, ending part is cool. I dig it. But uh, well, I'm just saying we didn't need her like mechanic backstory. No, didn't need that for this part. But still, but it's also cool. disappointing there at the end. Like you know, so she she crashes him into the, the right. wrought iron. You know, that impales him. Then she puts she falls asleep <clears throat> with her head in the yeah, uh, the she ho- got, like, on the horn. Out, yeah. Okay. I'm with you there. Yep. But then fade to next morning. She wakes up. Yep. The that no one has come to the house, nope. which was supposed to happen at dawn, eh. because the leader of the fraternity is dead. So nobody shows up. Right. So it's just her. She wakes up. She looks out the window, and then the mongoloid's still there, hanging off the thing. I'm like, okay, well, that's either you. If you do this, either he's not there, right, or he's still alive somehow, or there's mm-hmm. another. It's not just like. Oh, he's still there. So she gets out of the car, and then the music starts, and she starts walking away, and then still frame credits. I'm like, it really is like, what was oh, the this point? Is, right? Yeah. What oh, is it's the over. point of that? Yeah, yeah it really is. Like, you oh, could have okay. ended with her slamming him into the thing. Right. Boom, done. And then mm-hmm. getting gets out, out and walking away. Man. Like yeah. we didn't need to wait till morning. She could have gotten out right then. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. Uh, and then it would have more of an impact. Yeah, or even she like she gets out of the car, looks over, and she can see the sun is coming up. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't yeah, have to be. There, no, we. There's. There she was, walks toward the sun. The yeah. shot is the, the that's what I'm. Si- that's what I'm. Yeah, that's we didn't exactly, the waiting. Like, yeah. Yeah. exactly. If, if what that's I'm where saying. you're gonna yeah. end it, do it quicker. Like yeah, yeah. yeah it, it could have be been done. so much. So quicker. how much time does this movie take place over then? Six hours. Well, but like from the time she crashes the car till the sun comes oh, up, how long oh, is that? Uh, well, the sun is yeah. up. It's past dawn. It's within twenty minutes of sunrise. Yeah. From Six the time she crashes minutes. the car, I can't gauge that time. Oh, from the time she crashes. Yeah. How long is she passed out in that car for? Who knows? I'm guessing maybe like twenty. At minutes. least thirty minutes, yeah. maybe more. Sure. Yeah. Still, yeah. they could have uh, made that better. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been better. Could have been better. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well. Maybe I mean, that's a good place to uh, leave you in suspense. Did we like this movie or would we recommend it to you? This is the question. But first, ladies and germs, we're going to bring out our mailman. He's going to bring us your mail. We're going to read it to you. Here comes Igor, the mailman. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Our mongoloid with the heaving breast. He's, He's got that like He's Jane Eyre dress on. Heaving bosom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little slimy. <laughs> Always slimy mm. with oh, Igor. The slimy, He's a slimy heaving bleep. bosom. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's some yeah, slime blah, blah, blah. stains on that dress too. Oh God. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, listener. Uh, we want this is an interactive experience here that we're we talking tried. about the Saturday Night Freak Show. What you want to do is you want to write into us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash giant freak sh- slash Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I almost did it. I, I, I had the urge to I, I do forgot it I didn't do it for a second. Then I tried to rush it and it went horribly wrong. Facebook.com slash Saturday Well, Freak show. welcome to my world. This is where I'm at when I'm mm-hmm. fucking up. Okay, so. I pop in my mouth so it didn't help. Twitter at Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About Hell Night. MF Mad, the keeper of the wall of fame and the Saturday night freak show says, uh, the killer of this movie, Andrew Garth reminded me of the warlock from spookies. <laughs> Sean, did you read I, this comment before you know I did spookies not earlier? I got a big spookies <laughs> vibe from this movie. Yeah. Because it's guys in a house or people yeah, in a house. With the, house. Yeah. The uh, nope. characters within spookies are far more, uh, how do you say it? More, <sighs> Uh, New Jersey, New York. Far more New Jersey. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say the far more New Jersey. Like, Like, should I have recommended that movie? They are caricatures in that movie. I did not recommend that movie. Did you? No. It was. uh, I. 
I recommend I can't, like I can't say I can't. Well, yeah, I can't say anything because I don't know how I felt about that movie. But it's yeah. a fuck. It's it's a weird movie. Yeah, it's if something you're not else. familiar with Spookies, go back and listen to our episode. But it's basically it's a movie that is a pretty it's decent horror movies. movie that ran out of money, and so then they shot like a different a movie, different movie, and, and then just cut them together, stitched it together, and it's like yeah, it it's just doesn't make any weird. goddamn sense. Yeah, so uh, either watch that movie or listen to that podcast. But yeah, Spookies, uh, the vibe is there. Uh, Nick Siebel writes in and says, "I remember as a kid having a VHS with Hell Knight." and the original Nightmare on Elm Street on it. Great <laughs> memories. Looking back, Linda Blair got blackballed. No pun intended. She dated Rick James <laughs> <laughs> in Hollywood because she of... She dated Rick James? There's, there's a, a photo. picture. Did what? you guys see the picture? Shut up. Of them oh, naked in bed together. Yeah. No. yeah. And he looks just... It's like... He looks just like the Chappelle show Shut era up. of Rick James. Yeah, it's... Right. What? Wow. It's, it's <laughs> shocking. That is fucking bizarre. The picture is... That's very interesting. We're truly someone worth per, a thousand words. Up. Well, yeah, there you go. Oh. Uh, well, uh, uh, Nick continues in... Uh, she was a black ball in Hollywood because of controversial... Because of her controversial portrayal of Reagan in The Exorcist, she's a horror icon who should have had been featured in more horror movies in the 1980s. There's a there's a funny story about... Um, oh. <laughs> He's got that hair, yeah. We're showing the picture of... Oh, Linda my God. Blair. Rick James, bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a funny story. The producer was talking about when he asked Linda Blair to be in this movie. And he called her. And he was like, hey, I want to take you to dinner. And she goes... You want me to do a horror movie, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it starts. Uh, Linda Blair, is, did she? She is. never really went back to horror movies. She became like an animal activist. Or she has an like animal that. charity, and yeah. if you ever see her at a convention, her like banner that hangs above a table says like Linda Blair from whatever the charity is called. That's yeah. it. It doesn't say anything else yeah. on it. So like, if you ever want to meet her at a convention, don't talk to her about the exorcism. She talk doesn't. She she actually gets like kind of yeah. rude if you ask. That's her right. About you got to talk to yeah. Eileen Neitz, the one who played the like mm-hmm. demon Regan uh, at some point. All mm-hmm. right. Um, pardon me. Uh, the uh, let's see. There it is. Uh, Novato <laughs> Judoka <laughs> says Hell Knight started off great. I thought the whole party was going to get it and be crazy, but we got right? left with six boring characters. So much slow walking like Linda going down the stairs for one minute. He says it's a decent one time watch question for the show halloween fall is drawing near how are you starting to set the mood john i'm not starting to set the mood i know how holly's doing it she's bringing hell night yeah i brought idle hands she i did. brought hell night you did i don't know it it just uh, for me it feels like it just happened so i'm just like i'm first of all appreciating the cool weather you don't have right anything now. you do to like put you in that mood. That's what he's asking. No, we're just getting there. Like I'm like this is the time be... I start doing it. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. I'm not ahead of the game. Like Michaela, I know <laughs> you, you are chomping at the bit no, look, to get into this. I am waiting for my fiance's birthday to pass so I can decorate the house for I Halloween. Know. I have to wait till after his birthday and then no, I can do it. So. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no, I'm you not haven't. You haven't yet. done anything yet. But is there anything that you are going to do? You know that you do every fall to get ready for Halloween to get you in the spirit. Get me in the spirit. Fall. <sighs> All right. All so right, folks. I'm going to tra- train. Tra- tra- make- no. You're clearly I'm- about to make something. No, up. this was supposed to be a lightning <laughs> no, no, no. round. And it's now, not. Yeah. I'm in a transitional period in my life, so I don't have anything solidified at this point. So okay, I can't Michaela. answer question. So there you, go. you don't go to the apple orchard. Just say I'm, I go, go to the apple orchard. Uh, is this truth, really truth, that complicated? Told, Kayla's I've, getting upset. Truth be told, I've never been to the apple orchard. <laughs> you know what? What? <laughs> what? I You've never, never been to the never, apple orchard? Never. You're a white male. Never. How have you never been? That's what we do. N- never been. Don't ever claim to like fall ever again. I've never been. All Just right, there eat, we go. I, Michaela. I, I, I Michaela. Eat the, I eat the donuts I, that everyone else brings to I, me. I, like, I had a donut today. That's not <laughs> high. Never been. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I, maybe I'll I, take the kid this weekend. Ooh, that'd be fun. If, yes. If, if you follow me on social media, you know I was very upset today because I have not found a single box of Count Chocula anywhere in stores yeah, yet. I and know. this time last They're year, I had already blueberry. finished a box. So yeah. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Why isn't it out yet? I'm getting yeah. a little concerned that I haven't found my Count Chocula yet. But yeah. yeah, as soon as that comes out, I like hoard that shit and I eat that for like two months straight. Like mm-hmm. just Count Chocula. Do you get, do you get blueberry too? Or no, just I don't like the fruit. Do I need a Frankenberry? Fr- I liked Fruit Brute, but they only make that 
that every couple years. So I like blueberries. No, they should count chocolate. Holly, what do you do? I've already done a couple things. Um, I very much like a spiced chai. I think it tastes like the holiday season from like October to December because it's like all spicy and delicious. It just reminds me of fall. So far, we're not n- n- yeah. labeling any things we do. We're just things we eat. That's a big know. part well, of consume. it. No. I, so I, I got my first. Consumer. Okay. I got my first spice chai this How week. I had my first Edward How donut the today. Ho- setting the mood for Halloween two, is, is just eating cereal and drinking a thing. My is past two picks Halloween? have been like Halloween-y kind of movies. There you go. That's right. You're getting yeah. in the, the autumn mood. Every day is Halloween in my fucking house. I just yeah. watch horror movies 24 hours <laughs> a day, seven days a week. Uh, Finding Colin Mulligan says the only post exorcist film that I remember from Linda Blair is repossessed. Oh yeah. It was Leslie Nielsen, but he says they'll have to check yeah. hell night out. Also thoughts on midsummer and keep up the good work. Sean midsummer. Oh boy. You don't want to ask me my opinions on that. Michaela. Haven't seen it. Holly. I haven't seen it. I saw it. I dug it. It's uh, too long. Sean it's Stiff too long. writes in and says Savage Streets is more watchable and fun to see than The Exorcist nowadays. Hashtag there it is. And or there I did it. There is. There I, there said, I said it. it. Sorry. There. Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Uh, I got we, my lost the, we lost the power man. of that hashtag. I, I, I will say. I, I hashtag think, truth hurts. I will say. I think most people don't remember how slow paced The Exorcist is. It's fairly slow paced. I don't think people remember. That. There's a lot of time with Reagan and her mom there before it. Well, I know from happens. like a modern perspective, that movie's a guy. Okay. No, we're not bad. bad. I'm, I haven't Nothing seen Savage Street, so I can't I say it's had better. I a guy in all earnestness tell me the other day that Mr. Brooks was a better movie than oh, Psycho. Oh, boy. Was this Jesus. the same person? The Dane Cook movie? Was this was the same a, person no, that said The Shining Sucks? With Dane Cook. Was said it was a movie? better movie than Psycho. Oh, the boy. Vince Vaughn Psycho? <laughs> That's I wonder. Yeah. yeah, I didn't actually clarify. Because, right? yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Was this the same person that said The Shining sucks and was not a big deal after they watched it for the first time? No. Okay. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I remember seeing Linda Blair in Exorcist 2 when I was younger and just beginning to become interested in women without sounding too vulgar. I have to admit, she was the only part of that I could pay attention to. By the way, love the show. It's the podcast that gets me through a Saturday work day. Aww, thanks. thanks. Oh, thank That's you. awesome. We appreciate that. Anything that will get you through a work day, we appreciate you for that. Mr. Red123 says, I know I watched this movie. I think I even like this movie, but I cannot remember much about it. I have a feeling it was probably awful. <laughs> Jonathan Holt. I love that guy. Jonathan Holt writes in and says, I hope what Linda Blair was wearing is what Igor is wearing when he delivers this week. Oh, mail. don't worry. It is. It is. It, it varies from week to week. But he is. Uh, oh, it's it's he, a tightly corseted number this week. Sure, but it is it is thematical. Like he will go with whatever the sh- uh, movie is. He really tried week. to yeah. like push up to get that like heaving right. bosom the look. He tried. He did. Bosom. There was some flesh just, that was, was disconnected like, from the body. Yeah, I was like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, just, loose, it's so, just loose. It's just chunks it's of just loose loose, loose yeah. flesh. But, right, down but he there. doesn't feel and the scars that, and the so. stitches and all that. He'll be fine. About last week. Wait, was the last week roar? Two weeks, two, weeks two weeks ago, yeah. okay. Andrew Bradford writes in and says, well, despite the inherent danger posed to his family, Noel yeah. Marshall, uh, uh, sorry, but to Mo- Noel Marshall's family, we can laugh about it now. Yeah. Roar, Just because nobody actually died. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only yeah. reason. Yeah. Otherwise, that would have been a tragedy. Yeah. Sure. Ryan Larson writes in and says, I went to a convention this weekend where uh, this is about the Sentinel Says I, oh, uh, yeah. Ryan says, I went to a convention this weekend where Beverly D'Angelo was a guest. And of course, I had to ask her about the Sentinel. She was super personable and told us all about being cast in the film and how she felt her part about her part when first reading the script. Sure. It made me think of you guys. Finally, I listened to the Idle Hands episode and I had to share my photo of Devin Sawa for the ladies. He yes. was at Monster Mania this past weekend and we had a fun Q&A panel. He's I, also about to appear in, in the, Fanatic yes. with he's, John Travolta. He seems like he's a cool guy to meet at conventions and stuff. I feel like he's, he would He be, seems yeah. really nice. I love hearing yeah. good convention stories, so if you have yeah. good convention yeah. stories, tell yeah. us. We're always... He'd be cool to yeah. meet. Yeah, I, I would definitely. Like, hey, I like you. Oh my in god, many things. I you would did, fangirl so hard hands, at meeting uh, Final him. Destination. You did Final Destination. You were in. I was also. I watched Now and Then. Now and Then. Uh, yes, yeah. I watched Now and Then. Casper, so. do you watch Little Giants? I know you did. Cas- little Giants. I know you watched yeah. Little Giants. Fuck yeah, Little Giants. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you pulling bottle caps out of your foot? What? No, Come I on. picked it up what's, with what's, my what's foot happening? while you were talking. And yeah, I was fucking, I was ninjing that shit. Okay. About our older <laughs> episode, No Retreat, No Surrender, Michael Whitaker writes Ooh. in again and says, this is going back a few movies, but does anyone else feel that it's strange that Bruce Lee's daughter has such a problem with his portrayal in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but has never spoken out about No Retreat, No Surrender? One per one portrayal one oh one portrayal is clearly offensive than the other and it's not the tarantino one i think everyone's having a way too big a problem with the tar- tarantino one. i think thank that, you I think very much no i think you all need to calm the fuck down and just it's a movie it's a right movie. he also killed hitler in a movie yeah so just i like, get calm that down i get that yeah. his daughter is upset that you know her dad isn't because it's your dad Sure. Yeah. Right. But at but, the same time, it's a but movie. I don't He's think a public like, person. It's not the same comparison to No, no Retreat, No Surrender because no one's not. ever seen that movie. Yeah, right. No one's ever seen No Retreat, No, no. Surrender. That's exactly it, this Tarantino it. movie is way more high profile. That's why sure. it's getting but, criticized. Yes. But that's in No exactly Retreat, it. No Surrender, it's like, ooh, bro, the ghost of Bruce Lee. Yeah, but if she came, this wisdom right. but to, if she came out and said that, everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck is this movie? I've never heard. She's drawing attention to it. They're gonna be like, who the fuck? Well, that also, but that goes the other way. And she's like, now she's drawing attention to a very giant Hollywood picture. So it's like she wait it, she, it, she's ignoring the one that may have done damage to her father's image, but she's But no one saw that pro- movie. Right. Well that's what I'm saying. The higher profile one is the one she's making us think about. Yeah, which, because everyone's seeing it. That's, that's why. Yeah, like yeah. she's doing it purposefully yeah. because yeah. exactly. I'm just yeah. like everyone yeah. needs to calm down, and I don't think this movie is going to change. I feel like the more offensive one is the the one that you brought. That's from the mind of Bruce Lee. Probably <laughs> yeah, circle, circle of, of iron. Iron. Yeah. I think that's more offensive. This is, it it is like the <laughs> dumbest fucking hill to die. And like, <laughs> come on, is. people. Like, don't. Do Where, what are we? I talking would probably about? die on dumb hills if that was my dad, though. Yeah. Too. Oh yeah, no. But then I get that. But that's yeah. how we have to see this. Is it's mm. her dad? Yeah. yeah. Of course, you're gonna be like, you know, somebody's not right. is and disrespecting she's not gonna, and my she's dad. Not gonna the way wait she until but she's what, gonna get you know? into it now before like. Well, yeah, because everyone's talking about yeah, it. But now. this right. is not what yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is about. It's and then, not you know, what it's you, about. The, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that brings us yeah. to uh, the most exciting part of the night, which is when we're gonna go around the table and find out what people thought about Colin. Oh, okay. Yeah, you. Uh, what did you think about tonight's movie, Hell Night? Oh, I thought you were going to ask what I thought about Colin. That's pretty much what, what that sounded about, like. What do you think about We're going to find out what people think, think about do Colin. Do you know about Colin? This is a therapy session for Colin right now. What do you think yeah. about Colin? Holly, what do you think about Colin? All right, so here's... Colin? I have Colin. been... Uh, Trolling the oh, the, well, the, the, the sea floor, the ocean floor, the basement what? of the slasher film genre okay. here for the past. So I did actually watch Hell Night not too long ago as part of and it's on Shudder. Thank you very much. Right now, if you subscribe to Shudder, you can watch this movie. Should you watch it? I don't think so. It's uh, it has a decent setup. Uh, I think we were all kind of in agreement. Maybe. I don't know. That's the feeling I got. Like the buildup in the movie, the setup coming from that you're going to do. Okay. This is the fraternity horror movie. Um, there was a episode of Tales from the Crypt with um, uh, Morton Downey Jr. You remember him? Yeah. Where I think it was like a fraternity. No, no, that wasn't the one. There was a fraternity. It was Kevin Dillon had a fraternity thing they had to go spend a night in a haunted house we're gonna try and you know put the the devices everywhere that like make the noises but is the sure. place actually haunted um it's a that's a horror movie staple yeah um my problem is uh i don't find the star power of linda blair to carry the movie you know, as a as a direct comparison to this, I would say look at Prom Night and look at Jamie Lee Curtis in that movie where it's a thankless role, kind of like this is. It's like it's not very well written. You just got to be in it. You're going to be uh, uh, Linda Blair and people will come and see you because of that. Sure. But Jamie Lee Curtis, you can tell in that movie where it's basically the same kind of thing role wise. There's not much to it. But Jamie Lee Curtis has that X factor that is like she's a star. You watch her because she's got it. You know, not Linda- to not to interrupt your your wrap up, but is Linda Blair any good? Can we ask that question real quick? I don't. I don't. Is she any not good? in this movie? Like, I don't think she's ever been really good. I feel like she she's, mumbles a lot. She's yeah. not I can't understand what she's saying. Yeah. I don't think she's great. She's no. not exceptional. She just, not at all. She, she was just, lucky uh, to be the the she, girl in the Exorcist. She was lucky she's to fine. be the she's Exorcist. Fine. But yeah. I'm. 
this is why great. she didn't have like a long career. Yeah, I think right. is she had a popularity for a while and it translated yeah. into several movies. The low budget, the the, the tail end. I mean, Savage Streets. Right. We're saying, you know, we watch these movies, obviously, but right, but right. nobody else would. No, and, and yeah, it's right. just like, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I know she was in like teenage confessions of a something. She was like a, uh, um, you know, teenage mother. Or something. I don't know any of these. Kind of, yeah, they so were, but she's so we know her yeah, from her horror well. and exploitation things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the movie's not made by a guy who it seems like understands horror. You know, it seems it like his vision was <laughs> compromised. Uh, it the soundtrack irritated the fuck out of me because it's mm-hmm. it's trying to do a synthy thing like John Carpenter, but the uh, they use the pitch bend. Everybody know what that is? It's mm-hmm. a little knob where you fucking turn it and you can turn the pitch of a note like while the note's playing, and it's make it distort. They mm-hmm. do that for every fucking note that they play in this movie. It drove me yes. nuts. Uh, I know that's what it's supposed to do, but like it was like okay, you're lazy and don't know how to write a, a movie score. Um. The killer whole it just never really came together well. It seems like it there's a lot of long, boring scenes of people wandering through dark areas. They don't fall prey to the Friday the thirteenth part seven, uh, you know, like uh, Tanya, Tanya, are you Hello? there? Yeah. Hello? Bill <laughs> Bill, is that you? Yeah. But they do it a little bit in this, but that's just part and parcel with the slasher sure, movie. Yeah. Uh slasher movie, I think, in order for it to be successful and for me to recommend it, because there's so goddamn many of them, uh, you gotta have uh something like Tom Savini Gore, or at least a uh you know, an approximation of it. Sure. You have to have the requisite uh well that would be I suppose the violence. You gotta have the nudity sex to go with it. This movie cheaps out on both of those and so you're left with uh ooh the suspense sequences which are uh-huh. artful and done like Hitchcocky and level no this guy can't pull it off. No. Um and I thought the makeup on the monster thing was kind of bad. I didn't hate it, you know I actually disliked it more when I watched it by myself. When I watched it with you guys tonight, we were, you know, having more fun with it. Well, we're talking about it and questioning it and be like, yeah. 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 So that was kind of, there was more energy toward the end of it this time, where I think the last time when I watched it by myself, I was checked out by then. And like, when is this fucking thing going to be over? I don't think I recommend Hell Night. I think the only thing really the only reason that we're even talking about it is probably because of the cult of personality of Linda Blair being in it. Mm-hmm. If uh, she is the star, if she wasn't in it, uh, which, you know, uh, there's movie, other movies like Graduation Day, which I would recommend over this, but you've never heard of it because there's nobody in it that you've heard of. Yeah. You know, uh, so I would say, no, I think you can pass on Hell Night. Sean, what do you think? Um, I think that... <clears throat> I think that um, I would rather watch a movie called uh, Night of the Demons. That's what I was thinking too. Than mm-hmm. this which movie, which we did watch, on which the show. we did watch, <laughs> um, because this feels like um, it feels like Night of the Demons did it better. Um, there's not, um, yeah, there's not a lot. Uh, there's not a lot going on with this movie. Um, uh, there's only so much you can do with a, like I said before, a, uh, a old dark house movie. Um, and I don't think this movie goes to the extremes uh, enough to, uh, that other movies have done before. Uh, what what year was, do we know what Night of the Demons was? It feels like it was around it was the time. 88. Yeah, it was, yeah, 88? It was much yeah. later. Yeah, even if it was later, and like they figured out, at a certain point they figured out how to do it, even with it was before or later, and it's it's done better than this movie. So, um, no, there are definitely other movies that do it better, and so you should probably just go watch those. So I can't recommend um, this movie. What's it called? Hell Knight. Hell Knight. I, <laughs> nah, yeah. No, nope, I can't recommend Hell Knight. Um, there's, uh, yeah, it kind of skimps out on a lot of stuff. It doesn't get into the exploitive elements that it probably should for a movie of mm-hmm. 1981 so it's mm-hmm. really like doing itself a disservice so um and there's plenty of other movies out there that do it better um again like colin said i don't hate it, mm-hmm. it it's uh you know it's capable it just doesn't do the extra things that i've seen a lot of other movies do yeah. so it just doesn't quite measure up to you know uh we know what it can do mm-hmm. and the fact that it doesn't do it is disappointing so you know um I would probably skip 
uh, this movie and uh, go watch just go watch Night of the Demons. It'd be fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would. It's a pass on this one, uh, Michaela. Yeah, yeah, Sean, I agree. I was actually going to mention Night of the Demons too. I was it just really does say, feel like, like that's part it's and parcel of this. Re- like Night of the Demons, almost the same premise, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's like uh, I like. I don't think this movie really pulls off anything particularly well. Mm. Like maybe if it had been successful at like one or two things really well, it would, that would have helped it a lot more, but it's like, I don't hate it either. Like it's Mm. not an offensively bad movie. It's, it's there in the hands of a more capable director. Maybe it could have been something. I think that's the biggest problem is that the director doesn't seem to know what he's doing and also doesn't really seem to care a whole lot. Maybe he doesn't want to do much more than what he does. Right. Right. Um, Editing, man, embrace the editing, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like the one of whatever listener said, there was like a full minute after walking downstairs. There really is. That does not need to be in this movie. I think you trim all those scenes, you, you could shave like twenty minutes off this movie if you just like ended scenes where they should naturally end. Um, and we were talking about while we were watching, we we're like, all right, this should be stopping now, and it's yeah. still going. Um, this movie just needs a lot of efficiency. Uh, it it's a wildly inefficient movie, and. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't even like the inefficiency doesn't even lead to anything really cool or something you haven't yeah. seen before, which is a shame. And yeah, I don't think Linda Blair is a compelling leading lady. And I, mm. I, she doesn't seem like she wants to be in this movie and doesn't seem like she gives a shit at all about what's happening. And yeah. it's very, she mumbles a lot. And I have a hard time understanding what she's saying. And her delivery is the same for everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, bear's up, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't recommend it. Holly? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah this this movie. <laughs> Holly, do you own this Blu-ray we're looking at right now? I do own the oh, Blu-ray. Okay. I do own it. Um, because I think there's something charming about this movie. I I, I can't really describe another. That that's that's the best way I can put it. I, there's something charming about this movie. I agree. I don't I don't hate this movie clearly. Um, but I also totally understand what you're all saying, and I completely agree with you. Um. It's funny because they they watched an early cut of this and the producer had just watched Terror Train and he was like, we need to have more chase in this movie. We need to add more. <laughs> so that's why like, there's like extended like cha- like through the garden and down the stairs. And I was like, really? Because of Terror Train? Like there's a reason. Like, no. All right, I got a I got a question for yeah. you, like because we see this a lot of, of times in these movies where mm-hmm. there are, I mean, this is a staple of, of horror, yeah. right? There's a person alone in a tunnel, mm-hmm. something like that, and they're going very slow. Maybe mm-hmm. they have a flashlight, right? Yeah. Yes. Why does that? What what? What's the difference between what when it works and when it doesn't work? What what's happening there? Why are we saying that some of them are bad, but some of them work and they're good? I think there's a lot of elements to it. Like first of all, this movie, as you said before, this movie has no score. It sucks. Music plays a lot into scenes like that because it can develop suspense. Suspense. Yes, suspense, suspense is what those scenes are about. But what is suspense? Suspense is knowing that, like, you don't know what's there's a bomb a- under yeah. the table, right? And yeah. this knowing kid just sat down at the yeah. table and he's having a conversation with his mom. Yeah, they don't know that the bomb is there, but we do. Right. Right. But this movie, like, because that's what I was always kind of thinking of, like, and they're in a dark tunnel. Mm-hmm. What's the suspense? Well, it's supposed to be you don't know what's ahead or what's behind you, or but we don't even yeah. know what that. It hasn't I been know. defined. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is that's the problem with you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, a lot could have been shaved off of this movie. I think just a few small things to change about it would have made this a much more memorable movie of the eighties. Like, I think changing up the score a bit. I think adding a little bit more blood. Um, just like a few small things would have made this Probably. like such a better movie. Even um, I don't remember his name. Peter Barton. Peter Barton was talking about how this movie it was right there. It was it was right there to be a really great memorable slasher movie, but they just didn't quite get over the edge. And I think just a couple small things would have made this a memorable movie, but it doesn't quite hit the mark. Um. But like I said, there's something very charming about it, and I can't really pinpoint what it is. Um, it's kind of sweet. 
You know, like like eighty slasher movies. I'm like, oh, they tried. <laughs> like, I think there's something kind of fun about it. But yes, I agree. We've seen this premise done way better. Um, so I uh, watch Slaughterhouse. Yeah, I I don't think I could. I think most people are would watch this by themselves, and I don't think they'd have as much fun with it. Um, I think we had fun with it just because we watched it as a group. Because I have um, someone else to point it out to. And be exactly. Like, hey, isn't this a thing? Yeah. And then you're just like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's a fun movie. And I think if you are, you know, watching all of the 80 slashers you and you're looking for hidden movies that you haven't seen before, this would be a good one to watch. Um, but recommend is like a good movie. Eh, you're probably not going to like it. I think you might find it sweet like I do, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. But I can't fully recommend it because I don't think most people would like it. Mm. So there, it there you go. It's Hell Night. All right, that's the final word on <laughs> Hell Night. So uh, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what are we going to watch so next? It's it's, it's, I, know. I yelled at him earlier. You so did. Um, uh, what are we going to watch next week, Colin? Yeah, I had three movies. I was thinking you about. did. I fucked one of them. <clears throat> You did because you, yeah, you're watching it for your work, which I'm like, should I take that away from the other folks? Then we've never done a Frankenstein movie on this show. We did Frankenstein meets, we did. Oh, Abbott and Costello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did. But we're not doing that. All Technically, right. we did Monster Squad, too. Oh, that's, that's true. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> fine, you got me. So, All right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, well, you know, there's this movie called Vice Squad, but I'm not going to do that. You know why? It's Halloween time. That's why. It's Halloween time. So oh, we're going to go. Well, yeah. So I, I have my Halloween pick also. I think oh what we're going to do, this is also You're celebrating a too. recent uh, Blu-ray release. Uh, we're going to look at a movie called Alice Sweet Alice. Hell yeah. Oh. I mean, have you seen this? I Not for like 10 years. Okay. So this I remember is... like two things from it. Okay. Well, hopefully you don't remember what what you, you, you need to remember. Oh, no, right. I, know I, I know I mostly remember like image, was... imagery, not, okay. not right. actual plot I know nothing about this context. movie. This is Brooke Shields' first movie. Yeah. Oh, this never, is a very never, well-known never heard of movie. This. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a I very well-known movie. Yeah. I don't know what this is. Okay. It's a good pick, Colin. Right. We're going to have a lot so, to talk okay. about. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, yeah. so that's Alice Sweet Alice on next week's episode. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>